Hey guys, Mike here. So big week ahead here, and one reason is because of where the index are sitting at right now. Very key levels of resistance here, and are they going to bust above those resistance levels or not after this crazy move up? Where shorts were coming like crazy, we left gaps galore behind, uh, regular trading hours gaps, fair value gaps, you name it. And so we'll get to see, and when we look at the charts, you'll see you know what really should happen. Uh, but there are some other key things to look at, like what happens to the S&P when the Fed actually does pause, right? If July was the pause and we're not doing one in December or anything else, you know, what happens there? But there's also a couple other things to watch out for, uh, and three of them being this right here. One is going to be what's going to be happening in all these bond auctions because we're going to have a bunch of them this week for the 10-year, 30-year, all at 1 o'clock, 20-year as well. And the big thing is the debt, right? And, you know, people talk about they're going to be cutting debt. I don't see how you cut debt, though, when you're sending so much overseas. I don't, I don't get it. And it just still shocks me that it's talking about cutting stuff here at home. Yet from 2012, 2021, and nine years, we sent $530 billion across the, you know, overseas or whatever. No idea where the money went to, which is weird what's frustrating about it. But it's going to be really hard, you know, for Americans to swallow a pill of cutting stuff here like Social Security and Medicare and all this stuff when you're still just fixing to ramp up the spending. You're going to be spending to front two wars right now. And it just drives me nuts to see that happening. And again, now that I don't support the people overseas, whatever, we sent plenty of money to them. Okay, let me know what you think in the bottom about that. You also have Fitch credit rating putting this out Friday, which this can be a manipulation thing saying, oh, the credit ratings of top U.S. banks are vulnerable. Really? Like, has that never been the case before? But that's them kind of hinting at it, right? Trying to say, well, we, we might do it. We might do another downgrade. Of course, it, what have you seen with banks right now? The stocks are getting bought up last week, right? Then you got Warren Buffett, right? They reported their earnings and they're sitting on a record pile of cash and cash equivalents. They bought just so much in treasuries. But they are setting there. This is a new record. This beats their Q3 2021 record of 149 billion. And so uh, again, I remember I think it was second quarter. I believe they were a net seller of stocks and everything. So you know, what is he looking for? And it's actually, I believe it was like their first like loss of a quarter or something like that. Which I'm, I'm not. I don't really look at their earnings too much. But you know, is he sitting around just waiting uh, for a pullback? Do you think there's going to be a recession? Is that what he's going to use all that cash for? We'll have to see. And that leads us into the S&P performance after the final Fed rate hike, which of course we don't even know it's the final one. But you know, when you look at this, you can go through all of them if you want to. I'm just going to stick to like 95 and above here, right? And 95, when they did the final rate hike, six months later, the S&P was up 19%. 12 months later, it was up 32%. And it took 104 days before they did a cut. Now, you go to 2000, this one's negative 6.8%, negative 15% because why? The dot-com bubble just got in full mode right there at that date. It took 155 days for the cut. Uh, and then you got 2006. They did their final rate hike. And on 629, 2006, and SP went up 12.1 after six months, 18.3 after 12 months. About 300 days later, they did a rate cut. Then 2018, we know about this one. Six months later, we're up 17.8% and then up 27.3% 12 months later. That's when they did that taper tantrum and stuff. And so normally, in normal times, what will happen is when they do the rate cut, the stock market usually like makes one last surge before the economy nose dives down. And so we'll see how it plays out this time. Now, looking at the S&P, I got a lot of stuff in here for you, right? I got so the year-to-date high anchored VWAP right here, which goes July before we started selling off, right? And then when you go back, you can see that's where we hit, right? Which actually lines up right there with that trend line where we're sitting at of resistance. Then when you go back and you get, okay, October's low where we bottom, anchored VWAP. And then the high of 2022 anchor VWAP, they line up in the exact same spot, and that's basically where we bounce right there, along with support. So that was key level above and below right there. So you could see us sit there and make sense to try to pull back right here, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then you know move back up to stay in that range, right? And then when you bring the moving averages in, the 100 lines up right where we're setting the resistance, the 50 is going to be right above that. And then, of course, you got the 200. Uh, we've already passed up, right? So we've got back above that already. And when you look, that's a boatload of resistance to bust through with a bunch of gaps above and below left to be filled right there. And so it makes total sense to actually take a breather, digest this move up, start to move down, grab liquidity uh, before you start to move back up. 
And you know, when we come here and look at it, that's what I'm talking about all these regular trading hour gaps. When you go to extended, uh, you can just see all the fair value gaps that are left behind on this thing. And so, yes, look at that move right there. That's crazy, right? That's an index. It's the S&P. It's not even the Q's. And so it would make total sense if it did that. I don't mean it's not going to keep pushing, right? I mean, we could see more shorts start to cover and still see this thing start to ramp up or whatever. Because we're already in November, the first four days, usually the most bullish. And after that, you kind of got a coin toss. So, again, if you're looking for a big move, I would say let's pull back, fill some of the gaps, get some liquidity grab going, and then start to charge up. But again, you know, let me know in the comments what you think is going to happen there. Now, the QQQ. And before we continue, guys, please hit that like button there at the bottom. Give it a thumbs up. Help, helps people find the video. And if you like this kind of content, think about subscribing. I appreciate all you guys' support. This is another one on the monthly. You can just see, I mean, that resistance, that's heavy, heavy resistance right there for it to try to get through. So you got the S&P sitting there. You got the Qs are sitting there. And again, IWN has made a big move. The Dow had a big week last week. And so, I mean, that's a, a huge candle right there. So we'll, you know, we'll see if tech's going to continue to ramp up or not. Now, when it comes to Tesla, you can see we got this trend right here, multiple rejections off of it. So let's see if we end up, you know, moving down, maybe trying to fill this gap. It's about a 5% move, I believe it is, before we try to proceed above this. But as you can see, if this wants to continue up, there is a huge, huge volume gap right there, again, with that huge earnings gap down. And so, you know, if calls start rolling in, it's going. That's just the way it's going to be. Then maybe we back test later. But again, we'll see if we return to that 202, 212, like battle zone area next week. If the market decides to sell off, I think this will just go whatever the market wants to do, right? I think it's what's going to happen. And again, I mean, to, to move down about 5.9%, so decent move down or whatever, but uh, the move up's even bigger. So, you know, and again, this being Tesla, and we kind of zoom out here and, and see where we're at as far as any kind of resistance levels, you know, 233 right there. You see starting going into that gap. And so, again, watch for the call flow. Watch for any news to come out. There's cyber truck event until November 30th. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I mentioned that the other day. Now, when it comes to Apple, here's another stock, right? And this is the market, right? Because this is 7% of the SPY, 8% of the SPY. Sitting right there on this falling wedge right here. Does it finally break above this resistance, which is nice resistance, or do we start to sell off? And again, if the market sells off, I believe this will go down as well, of course. Or if it starts to go down, it's going to bring the market down, I should say. Now, Google's sitting at big resistance right here around 130. Does have that gap right there, which it started to move into. That was the gap from the uh, earnings call where they got absolutely destroyed and dropped 10% in one day. Uh, we can see on the moving average here, it's sitting right at that 100 day moving average. The 50 is right at the top of that gap right there. You can see those volume nodes to the right of where your resistance is going to be right there. And so, again, you got a lot of mega caps sitting at resistance. And so it makes sense for them to pull back after this big move they made last week, which would pull the market back. Now, the, another thing that's going to kick in, we talked about in Saturday's video. PayPal is one of these companies that has 600 million left to buy stock that it wants to spend in the fourth quarter they've already spent 4.4 billion right and so is this and you're gonna see this for apple against all these other stocks so that's what we got to look at especially in november december is this what's going to be pushing up because they're going to get rid of that money right then again paypal's had a nice move up it's going to a lot of resistance the rsi is over the 50 which is a good thing fintech is getting some love right now you can see all the moving averages above it i mean the chart's just a hot mess and so it has a lot a lot of work to do and a lot of resistance right there so We'll see if it can continue to push, but if they start spending that much money buying back stock, uh, that's a lot of share they can buy at this price right here. So just keep that in mind as well. And you, and you know they were buying it real cheap. Uh, so they're doing a little bit different than video. They're not buying at the top. They've been buying at the bottom. And so, again, 58 is going to be really probably big resistance for this one right here. As you can see, that's where it consolidated for a while. And again, you know, we go over to a different chart. You can see I'm adding in these gaps, right? These are all these gaps that was on the way down. Right. And so, again, these act as magnets. So if it does start to move up, push hard, they're buying stock, then those gaps are going to get filled for you. Now, Baba, falling wedge breakout. Uh, we'll see if this is going to finally get some love to continue. It's kind of funny. When you look at like the Ford PE of the Chinese stocks, their tech stocks versus our big tech stocks. I mean, it's so funny how low they've gotten. It's just but there's just no love for China right now. Maybe there will be. Just because of everybody, I think what knows where their economy is going. Even though they're doing a lot of QE right now, they're, they're throwing everything at the wall and see what sticks. And again, the RSI is above the 50. We've been here before. Still need to get that MACD above the zero. Like when it gets above the zero, that's when you know momentum 
is starting to shift in one of these stocks. And I believe they have earnings coming up. I think it's not next week, maybe the week after. Now looking at Disney, you know, this looks like an inverse head and shoulders like you see on the spy right there, which is a bullish formation to have. It looks like it's trying to test that neckline right now. So again, if this can bust out right here, and this is a inverse head and shoulders that plays out, probably puts you around, looks like 92. I'm just eyeballing that, but around 92, somewhere in there. So again, it'll be a big move for it. Uh, we'll see if it continues to get in love or not. Now, a lot of earnings, and I say high beta, I mean a lot of volatile stocks right here, okay? And most of them at least, for sure. So there's gonna be small cap mania this week. We'll see how it does with IWM, IWC, and stuff like that. Again, you're gonna say here, reality income, REITs have been destroyed. Uh, Hems of hers, TripAdvisor, we still traveling. Uh, Uber, Celsius, Datadog, DR Horton, the real estate. We'll see if they're, because they've been getting a lot of love this week because of rates dropping. Uh, Rivion, Devon, Upstart, Oxy, Wish, Mosaic, Gilead, right? And we go into Wednesday. Roblox has been having a pretty big move. Fisker, uh, what was that? Warner Brothers right there. Under Armour. We'll see if we're buying apparel or not. Uh, you got AMC. You have Walt Disney, we just talked about, right? Twilio, a firm coming up right there. And then on Thursday, you have Lee Otto. Uh, and you're sitting there with, eh, I don't see anything else on that side, really. Then you'll have Plug, Unity, Trade Desk, Win going on right there. And then Friday, I wouldn't worry about. It. There's really no earnings that. Uh, catch my eye at all now light on the economic data which is good right monday nothing going on tuesday a lot of fed speakers are going to be speaking right here really no data that should affect the markets right here at all wednesdays when it really is going to start right here when you're going to have uh fed speakers the mortgage stuff and then fed chair powell speak at 9 15 in the morning i don't know what he's talking about if it's a q a or something we'll have to see but at one o'clock you will have the 10-year note auction that will affect yields and this is the most important yield you want to pay attention to again more fed speakers thursday you'll get your job with data see if it's still showing up soft or not which the market will love for sure what's bad for you is good for the market uh, and then you're going to end up with a 30-year bond auction at one o'clock this is another one that's going to affect yields so pay that pay that close attention then two o'clock fed chair powell is going to open his mouth again for some odd reason and then Friday, only Michigan Consumer Sentiment and Fed speakers. So nothing that should affect the market, really. So it is a light economic data week. So that's something else that's in favor of the market. If it does want to move, again, I don't know what Fed Chair Powell's talking about or why he's even talking, but it's like 20 Fed speakers. So, you know, they want to try to run the market down. Maybe they can, but you'll see, you know, it probably just create more volatility than anything else. But those bond auctions are key, especially that 10 and 30 year. That's, that's the big ones, right? And so if yields drop, Stocks most likely will go up. Some people actually come out saying that yields are going to drop next week and stocks are going to drop at the same time. Yeah, they rose at the same time for like four months. So, you know, we'll have to see that. But I think, I mean, it would be healthy for the market to take a breather, come back down, close some of those gaps, capture liquidity before the move up. But again, we'll, we'll see if shorts are still covered or not. Are they finally exhausted and, and covered everything? And maybe they switch to going along what we'll to see because it is november so anyway hope you guys got some out of it hit that like and subscribe button if you did let me know what you're playing for the week in the comments and i'll see you tomorrow